I'm Steve for This Hook With Cars, and today we're back with my 1960 MG MGA. Last time we made a list of parts that I needed, and I have received those plus more. So I'm hoping today we can make a lot of progress on this car. The first new part that I got is the excluder. This keeps air from the engine bay coming through the pedal assembly and into the cockpit. Now, I've heard that some people are having trouble getting their pedals to go through these holes here. So th this part right here, this came from Moss Motors. Uh, different manufacturers might have different problems, but uh, let's see how well this one fits over the pedals. So what I need to do is get these two things to come through the two holes on the excluder. And it should be as simple as just sliding it over the top. It looks like this one is pretty pliable. I didn't have any problem slipping it over there. Next, we just slipped on the bracket that holds the excluder down. And then these two front bolts can be put in place that will hold this bracket here and allow us to install the rest of the items without this moving around on us. And then the master cylinder is going to sit on top like that. But as you can see, the ports for the master cylinder are back here. And it's gonna be really hard to get to those once the master cylinder assembly is bolted down. So I want to try to connect some of this stuff before I bolt this to the firewall. These are the two pipes that go into the master cylinder. This one has a banjo bolt connection and this is your standard brake pipe. I think the reason why the two are different is because they knew it would be really hard to get to this one over here, so they put a banjo bolt on that one. Now the second fitting requires a banjo bolt. And you're actually gonna have two different size washers for this. And that's because there's a shoulder here on the banjo bolt. If you try to put the smaller washer on there. You can see it won't go all the way to the top and it needs to be crushed up here. Whereas if you put the large washer on there, it goes all the way up to the head of the bolt. Getting all of these things lined up is going to be tricky. I'm going to put the bolt with the big crush washer through the fitting on the clutch line first. Then I'll hold the small washer up there and see if I can get it started into the master cylinder. Okay, I got it started. Now I just need to tighten that down and I can mount the master cylinder to the firewall. The head of this banjo bolt takes a 3 8 Whitworth wrench. All right, and there is where the master cylinder is going to fit. This gets bolted down by four bolts on the firewall and then two bolts down on each side over here. I have the bolts in pretty loosely right now so that I can get them all lined up before I've tightened it down. If you tighten down the ones back here, it might be, make it hard to get these in. These ones up here are a little bit loose right now. A lot of this is doing this just by feel. There we go. Now I'm gonna put the nut on right away so that it doesn't fall out. Now I can install the push rods. Those get held in with cotter pins. Our work right here is done for now. You can see this cap barely clears this edge right here. 
but it does. Now down here on the underside of the pedal box, we do need to uninstall some return springs on the pedals. A lot of people forget about this and their pedals don't sit at the same height from, the, from each other. And that's probably because they're missing one of their pedal return springs. The other thing that we need to install is the pedal limiting shaft. And this goes across uh, in the mount there and it limits how far the pedals can be pulled back towards the driver. It seems to me that it might be easier to install the springs first and then I can push the pedals back by hand and get the bar in there. By installing the springs first, I can pull the pedals more towards me so I don't have to stretch the spring out as much to get it on there. The springs are not symmetrical. This large end goes through the pedals and the smaller end goes through the pedal box assembly. I'll get these installed and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, you can see the return springs are installed now. I had to get one new one. I did find one of the old ones. And they return the pedals up. This bar right here limits how far the pedal can come up. So now they're going to be staying at the same level. And I found that having this bar out didn't really make any difference for putting the springs in besides that I could get to the hole on the pedal a whole lot easier. It didn't, the pedals really didn't come up too much further than this limiting bar right here. So the one advantage that you do gain is you get a lot better access to put the springs in to the holes on the pedals. And I recommend putting this side of the spring on first through these holes and then put them through the pedals. That's what I found to be the easiest. With that all sorted, I don't want to put any brake fluid in yet until I've replaced the hoses. So I have a set here. These are stainless steel hoses. In the back of the car, there's just one hose, this one right here. You can see the old one right there. Goes to a distribution block, which then divides it off to the two rear wheels. And up front on the hose, it connects to a pipe. While I work on the rear part of the hose, I'm gonna spray this side with some penetrating oil. I've shown you this before. I like to just cut the hose as close as I can to this end. That way I can slip a socket down on here and it's a lot easier to remove from the distribution block. This is not wanting to turn, so I'm gonna put some heat on it. And remember, brake fluid is flammable, so if you have brake fluid pouring out of here, you don't want to use fire. Let's give that a try. And that did it. The other end of the hose is a little bit different. This nut holds the hose to this bracket. The first thing we need to undo is the pipe that goes into the hose. So this is our important connection here. Once this has been removed, then I can use a socket to unscrew this nut and the hose should just come out. We'll see how stuck this is. There. Wasn't too bad, came right off. I didn't need to go get a flare wrench. I'll just put a wrench on the top to hold the hose. And then spin the nut off. Let's try that again. They need to hold the hose down. There we go. Since we can't cut the new hose in half, we do have to install this end first because the hose itself is going to have to turn to thread the end of it into the distribution block there. The other side doesn't have to turn. 
once we've screwed the hose onto the distribution block, this side just falls through the hole and you tighten the nut up. When you're installing the hose on the rear axle, don't forget that there's a crush washer right here that goes between the hose and the block. On the front of the MGA, it uses banjo fittings on the wheel side of the hose. And on the other side, it's like the front of the rear was. It just uh, is held on by a nut right here. So that means neither side of the hose needs to spin. It also means that if you can get under the car like I have done here, you don't even need to take the wheels off. I'm going to undo the banjo bolt side first. There should have been a crush washer on the top of that. I don't see that there was one. Now we'll see if this side will unscrew. Came loose pretty easy. Now let's see if we can get the hose to loosen up. I'm going to just get the nut started on this side first and then I'll put the banjo bolt in and then I'll tighten everything up. And then connect up the brake pipe. Now I can fill the master cylinder with brake fluid and bleed the brakes and the clutch. I've shown you how to bleed the brakes and the clutch many times before, so I'm not going to show it again in this video, but I will show you where the bleeders are on the rear wheels. The bleeders are right here. On the front wheels, the bleeders are way up here on the top of the caliper. And the clutch slave cylinder is the easy one. You can see the bleeder is right there, readily accessible. This is exciting. I finally think I have working brakes and clutch on this car. There's only one way to find out. I'm going to start it up. I put a block up there for safety, also a block behind the car so I can move it forward and back. And hopefully the blocks will stop me if something goes wrong. But let's get it started and see if it moves. While the clutch was really touchy, uh, you can see it's smoking because I had the choke uh, set full on right now with a pair of vice grips under the hood. But it finally moves forwards and backwards. If you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.